Hi. Hi. It's, hey. It's, it's us. us again. <laughs> uh, I'm Daniel. This is my dad, Eric. And uh, happy Resurrection Day, we call it here. Um, and we are glad, so glad what Jesus did for us. Yes. Because when we receive him as our Lord and Savior, we are saved and uh, we have a new life. We are new creations in Christ. In fact, the Bible shows us that in the resurrection, that's when we get born again. Because yeah. when, I'll show you that in a little bit, but if if you are watching right now and you uh, have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, you can do that with us. I'm going to show you what salvation is in case you don't know what it means to be saved. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you've read the Bible and didn't understand it, but uh, but we're going to go step by step with you and then pray with you so that you can make sure that you are saved and that uh, you don't just know about God, but you have a relationship with God and that you are a new creation in Christ. So uh, Daniel, when did you get saved? March 28th, 2020. Yeah, he just got saved. So it's a couple weeks. Is that like Three weeks, maybe. Yeah, three weeks. About almost three weeks ago, I think. Uh, yeah, so... I think two. Yeah, I think two. But since he got saved, we've been having devotions together. And it's been uh, a lot better, right? You understand yeah. what, what we're talking about? Because yeah. what happens is he has the Spirit of Christ in him. He has the Spirit of Jesus in him. And... Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit confirms with his spirit that he is saved and that he has an understanding of what the Bible says because it's spiritually discerned. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you for uh, listening. Well, thank you, Daniel, for sharing that. So yeah. uh, you are a new creation in yeah. Christ, right? Yeah. Do you know how you get saved? Well, we're going to go over that. Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. That's his confession, too. Okay, so, all right, I'm going to go over it with the people right now, our friends and family. Uh, and if anyone is not saved, maybe you can show this to them so they can go, uh, they can look at this with us and we can pray with them at the end of this video, okay? So thank you, Daniel. You can go sit down if you like, or you can stay here, depending, whatever you want to do. Okay. So anyway, uh, what happened was Adam and Eve, they bowed the knee to sin. So when they bowed the knee to sin, sin entered the world. And before that, God, okay. God, uh, God used to walk with Adam and Eve. And, and then when they sinned, you know, uh, they became fearful all sorts of stuff. So that's why there's so many bad things in the world. It's not because God's doing it. He's not doing it. He made everything good, but he gave man a free will. And when Adam and Eve used their free will to sin, sin entered the world. And anyone born with the bloodline of Adam uh, automatically is sin. Okay, so the bloodline is corrupted through Adam and Eve when they sin and they, they used to have good blood, pure blood, God blood, but now their bloodline is corrupt. Okay. So we have to, and then, uh, God sent his only begotten son, Jesus to die for us so that we can have new life and that we can be saved. We can be reconciled back to the father and we can be redeemed through Christ Jesus because he's the perfect sacrifice the word became flesh and dwelt among us and he was born so that he could sacrifice himself as the perfect sacrifice so that we don't have to go to hell and that we can be reconciled back to God. So that's why Jesus came. He is the perfect sacrifice. No longer do we need to sacrifice the blood of bulls and goats, but we already have our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the perfect lamb the unblemished lamb, he was sinless, and he was born of God, and he came on this earth, 
was tempted just as we are tempted, but without sin. So let's go over what Jesus says here. Uh, if you would turn your Bible with me to John in chapter 3, the Gospel of John. So uh, let's look here. Let's see. Can we do this? Or no, 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 no. Um, well, anyway, go to John chapter 3. I'll, I'll just, you can look at your Bible if you have one. And in it, John 3.16, it's a famous verse of scripture. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So he sent his only begotten son, like I was saying, Jesus to die for us as the perfect sacrifice. And when he went to the cross, he took your sin, my sin, everybody's sin. He took all sickness and disease. He took the coronavirus on his body and he got, he got lashed or, you know, with a cat of nine tails. And in those days, they took one less than 40, which means 39. So he took 39 lashes on his body, for one for each classification of disease, because there are 39 classifications of disease. So he took every sickness, every disease on his body and carried it on the cross. And uh, he took sickness and disease that wasn't even around back then on his body. So he took... He took sickness, he had AIDS, he had uh, coronavirus, he had SARS. He took it on his body so that we do not have to take it. The thing is, we have to receive it, yeah. okay? He already healed us, so we just have to receive the healing, which he did. And the enemy wants to put it on our body so that he can, you know, out of ignorance, we say, oh, you know, I must live with that. But it's not true. We don't have to live with sickness and disease. In fact, when you are a Christian, you can you can uh, have divine health and healing, but you got to study the scriptures on it. So let's go through this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So now after you've read that, let's go to Romans in chapter 10. Go to the 10th chapter of Romans and we'll start with uh, verse... Okay, 8. Google 10 and 8, Romans 10 and 8. Okay. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Okay. And then in verse 9 it says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, which is your mouth, that Jesus is your Lord, that you make Jesus your Lord, and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. Okay? There's nobody else that has been, uh, that died and then rose and is still living. Jesus is the only one. Okay? The other gods, they are so-called gods. They died and they're dead. Okay? Um, and if they're alive, they're not in heaven. <laughs> okay? But it says, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, okay, you got to confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with thine heart the man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what happens there? It says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So you may say to yourself, I'm not ready yet. I'm not good but nobody's good. The Bible says that no one is good, okay? So nobody's going to be good before they even do this. So they have to do this, and for what the heart man believeth unto righteousness, 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart. And when you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth, you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Nobody is before they get saved. So you have to get saved to become righteous. You can't just be righteous and do good. Okay? You can't just do a, uh, good works and go to heaven. It doesn't work that way. You still have a, your blood would be still corrupt. Okay? Then the scripture says, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay? For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is over all is rich unto them, unto all that call upon him. So you call upon somebody and they come to you. And for verse 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we got to call upon Jesus and say, Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. You know, you call upon him and I believe that God raised you from the dead. So we have to believe that God raised him from the dead and then confess with your mouth that he is your Lord, okay? That you make him your Lord and Savior. And we'll pray that together. And when we pray that together, you repeat after me, okay? So that make it just like it says, thou, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, okay? So then it says, how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Okay, I'm preaching. <laughs> so I'm your preacher. And uh, how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Then it says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I'm preaching the word of God to you and faith is in your heart to receive. So you have to have the faith in your heart to receive the blessing. So you, first you believe it and then you speak it. And when you believe it and then you speak it, then it is made. Just like when God created everything, he said, let there be light and there was light. He believed it first, he spoke it, and then it was made light, okay? It's the same thing with salvation, okay? So, once again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, okay? And then in Romans 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, or that Jesus, you make him your Lord and Savior, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay? So you have to do this. You can't just go to church. Okay, a lot of people go to church, never did this, and then they end up going to hell because they never confessed Jesus as Lord. So you have to call upon him, it says. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? So let's do this together. So I want you to repeat after me and close your eyes and say this. Say, Jesus, I thank you. Forgive me of my sins. Father, I thank you that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I believe it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So Jesus, I receive you. I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I will serve you. I will live for you. I will do what you say. I thank you now that I declare and I decree that I am saved that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And right now, Father, I just ask you to send the Holy Spirit and baptize me with power from on high so I can go about doing good and doing what Jesus did when he was walking on the earth. I thank you. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I am saved. 
Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer with me, then believe it. You are saved, that you are sanctified. You are sinless. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And you are my brother in Christ. And I'll see you in heaven because that's where you're going. And now that you're on this earth, now we can go about doing good and we can we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We can do what the Bible says. So I recommend that you study what the word says and who you are in Christ and find out who you are because we must renew our minds. We have to renew our minds so that we can be no longer conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay. And the Bible says that you have the mind of Christ and he is living in you now. And now when you read the Bible, you will understand it. Uh, you will make it work for you. Hallelujah. You can walk by faith and faith only comes by hearing the word of God. So the world doesn't really know what faith is. Okay. But faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of, word of God. That is the definition. Hallelujah. That's how it comes. So Remember that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, okay? So I love you and God bless you. I'll see you again next time and have a happy Resurrection Day. And it should be the happiest Resurrection Day yet if uh, you were just celebrating it before. But we're never a, a, a Christian. Now you are so you can enjoy the full benefits of the Resurrection because you've been resurrected with Christ, and that is your new birth. You are born again through the resurrection. That's why we have Resurrection Day. Okay? So remember that we know that God raised us from the dead, and that's why we have to confess that, because we know that he did that so that we can be saved, that we can have life and life more abundantly in Christ because we've been risen with Christ and our life is hid with Christ in God. God bless you, everyone. See you next time.